and now we've got him. So we've now picked up a wild cockatoo with the greatest of ease. Excellent. So there we are. And I'm now securing him, just giving him a cuddle, um, keeping his feet away from my body, um, and just using the roll that I created along the edge of the towel to secure the neck. And we'll just make sure that is firm enough so that he doesn't slip, he can't slip his neck backwards out through the, the collar that I've created. I've now got his body in a relatively secure manner. Not totally secure, but it's pretty good. He's got something to chew on if he wants to. But we're just going to talk to him now and just say hi. Hi baby, I'm here to help you. I'm here to help you. I've now got two hands instead of one. Hello. Hi. Hi. And I'm maintaining eye contact. The eyes are black, so that makes him, well, nearly all the adult males have black eyes, even sulfur crested cockatoos, and about half the half the uh, adult females have black eyes, the other half have reddish brown eyes. And the varnished mahogany red looking eyes. Alright, that part's good. Okay, I'm just going to examine your wing, man. Just quietly. Just quietly. So, we're just putting him on his back and we're having a look at his feet. His feet are in good order. They're, they're working okay. His vent is nice and clean. His abdomen is concave and his pectoral muscles are well rounded. So this is a recent injury. And mm -hmm. he's not yeah. obese um, as most captive cockatoos are. Uh, I'm not feeling any fatty tumours or anything like that. So I'm just giving him a general a general check by feel um, over that area. And then we're going to start looking at his wing. So there are a number of different ways of doing this. One thing I'll point out while I, before I do it is that when I'm extending his wing while he's conscious and prone to struggle, I'll be extending his wing forward in that direction rather than out here because the pectoral muscles here are going to pull the wing that way if he struggles and um, if he were to have osteoporosis or fragile bones we could end up with an extra broken bone and that's not what we want. Now, a um, second towel might be very, very handy. Here's one. Another one. I'll just give him a little bit more to chew so that he's not chewing my trousers there if I rest him there. Now, I'm going to be keeping my wrist or something across his neck while I free up this wing to examine. And I'm going to examine one, one um, joint at a time so that I'm not manipulating everything at the one time. So the first thing I'm doing is working on his wrist and just checking out down here and the equivalent of our thumb is a little wing here. That's That little wing there is known as the bastard wing or alar wing and um, I'm just checking that his thumb is okay, that feels okay. I'm checking the flesh of is the equivalent of our hand, which goes from the wrist, from the wrist down to about the tip of that uh, alar wing. But anyway, there is no swelling or inflammation there, so that I can feel. I'm now going to feel up this part of his body. So I'm taking hold of the wrist and I'm just using thumb and forefinger going up each side of the radius and ulna feeling for any fractures, cracks, swelling, pain and I'm not getting any so um, that feels okay so 